After all, where did the space come from? You got the particles, but where did the universe come from? Well, the interesting thing is, and we don't have a theory of quantum gravity, I want to emphasize that. We do not have a theory of quantum gravity. Okay, we're working on it. Many people are, and many people think they have hints of it. But one of the things we know about any theory of quantum gravity is it's quantum mechanical. And quantum mechanics tells us that in space, particles can pop in and out of existence. Quantum fluctuations can happen. Gravity is a theory of space and time. If we quantize that, then space and time become quantum variables, and space and time can pop in and out of nothing. When you add, when you in, in, any theory of quantum gravity, when you put quantity and quant, gravity and quantum mechanics together, it allows spaces and times to pop into existence. It means that there is no space, no time, and poof, a universe pops into existence. Now, most universes that pop into existence will pop out of existence, just like virtual particles. Okay? In a microscopic time. What kind of universe could exist with impunity? A universe with zero total energy. Now it all begins to sound like it's all coming together, but it's not so simple. And I don't want to pretend it is. Because it turns out the only universe that we can actually mathematically prove has zero total energy is not a flat universe. It's a closed universe. So what gives? Well, most closed universes, as you saw, will expand and collapse, and they'll expand and collapse if they created microscopically in a microscopically short time. The only closed universe that could not, that would survive long enough for us to ask the question is one in which there was a very early period of accelerated expansion that would puff it up so large that it wouldn't collapse right away. But that's precisely what particle theory now predicts. This theory we've heard mentioned several times called inflation. Predicts naturally based on the extrapolating the kind of physics we talked about. That very early on in the universe there was a period of accelerated expansion when it, when it increased in size by a volume of at least 10 to the 90th in a time frame of a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. Now, what will that do? Well, what would inflation do? If it happened in the early universe, it would take a closed universe and puff it up. But if it puffs up, what would happen? Well, it's like puffing up a balloon and making it the size of the Earth. When you puff up a universe that's curved, you make it look flatter. And therefore, the only closed universe that could survive long enough to live to be enough for us to evolve, still can use that word here, is one that had an inflationary period and therefore one that must look flat. So in fact, the only universe that can be created from nothing by this kind of mechanism and survive long enough for us to be around is a universe that looks flat, precisely like the universe we live in. And that's the point I want to mention. We can't show, because we don't have a theory yet, that the universe came from nothing by this. But it's plausible. And that plausibility is amazingly worth celebrating. But more than that, we can ask the question, what would a universe look like if it was created from nothing by just laws of physics without any supernatural shenanigans, and it would look exactly like the universe we live in. And that is remarkable. One of the most enigmatic inquiries in cosmology is whether our universe possesses a boundary. Should one continue traversing through space on a hypothetical starship capable of exceeding the speed of light, Will they eventually encounter a limit beyond which further progress becomes unattainable? Because if the universe indeed had a boundary, what exists in the realm beyond it? It is quite challenging to envision, but comprehending an endless universe is as challenging. The observable universe is a ball-shaped region of the universe that includes all matter visible from Earth or its space-based telescopes and exploratory probes. This includes the electromagnetic radiation emitted by these objects, which has had enough time to reach the solar system and Earth since the start of the cosmological expansion. Originally, the estimation suggested that there may potentially be two trillion galaxies within the observable universe. Um, so there's, there's nothing outside the universe. 
So when you think of the universe expanding into something, I guess you have this sort of model of a balloon being blown up inside a room, right? And the balloon is expanding into the room. But the problem is that there's no sort of space outside the universe for it to be expanding into, right? So the universe, the expansion of the universe is just the creation of space and time itself, right? The space-time fabric of the universe itself is expanding. I think a much better analogy than, than the balloon one, I really hate the balloon analogy, a much better analogy is, imagine you take the number line, so you know, the number line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that extends to infinity. If you multiply every number by two, you've expanded the number line, right? Um, I mean, you've expanded the number line by spreading them out, but it's not expanding into anything. There's no sort of beyond the number line, which is absorbing the new numbers or anything. You just, you've taken an infinite thing and spread everything out, so you've expanded it but it's sort of expanded from the inside. There's no such thing as the outside for it to be expanded into, if that makes sense. <laughs> These things get very trippy, right? Because like we are, we're trying to understand sort of cosmological objects with our human brains that evolved to run around the savannah and you know run away from lions and stuff. And like <laughs> our minds didn't evolve to think about these cosmological things. So like on some level, you have to just kind of trust the maths and accept that it doesn't make any kind of intuitive sense. The commoving distance from Earth to the edge of the observable universe is about 14.26 gigaparsecs, or 46.5 billion light years, or 4.40 by 10 to the power of 26 meters in any direction. The observable universe is thus a sphere with a diameter of about 28.5 gigaparsecs, or 93 billion light years, or 8.8 by 10 to the power of 26 meters. Assuming that space is roughly flat, in the sense of being a Euclidean space, this size corresponds to a commoving volume of about 1.22 by 10 to the 4 cubic gigaparsecs, or 4.22 by 10 to the 5 cubic gigaparsecs, or 3.57 by 10 to the power of 80 cubic meters. Given the assumption of isotropy in the cosmos, the distance to the outermost boundary of the observable universe is approximately equidistant in all directions. Put simply, the observable universe can be described as a spherical area with the observer at its center. Each location in the cosmos possesses its own distinct observable universe, which may or may not intersect with the one centered on Earth. The photons produced immediately following the occurrence of the Big Bang have been traversing through the vast expanse of space for a duration of 13.8 billion years. Consequently, our ability to observe the universe is limited to a maximum distance that corresponds to the amount of time it takes light to travel for 13.8 billion years. Due to the expansion of space, the co-moving distance which refers to the distance that remains constant as the universe expands, is estimated to be around 45 billion light years. Anything beyond this distance is not detectable to us since there hasn't been enough time since the formation of the universe for light from these far places to reach our telescopes. However, similar to the recognizable horizon observed by sailors at sea, the cosmic horizon is not an actual, tangible barrier. Just like the sailor's horizon, the ocean extends. And in the same way, our observable universe is limited while space continues to stretch. Galaxies can exist at these vast distances, but they remain imperceptible to us, regardless of the capabilities of our telescopes. However, Having knowledge that the universe extends beyond 45 billion light years does not provide us with certainty on its finiteness or infiniteness. Undoubtedly, the universe lacks a discernible boundary. The cosmos lacks any tangible demarcation devoid of any physical barriers such as walls, borders, or fences. However, it is important to note that this does not imply that the universe is boundlessly vast it is theoretically possible for us to inhabit a universe with a limited size, as long as three-dimensional empty space is curved in a specific manner, as suggested by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. If the universe has positive curvature, it would resemble the curved surface of a beach ball. But in three-dimensional space, 
rather than a two-dimensional surface. Throughout history, humans have falsely believed that Earth, the Sun, or even the Milky Way galaxy were at or near the center of the universe. No matter how unique we humans believe ourselves to be, the universe has thus far proven otherwise. In actuality, the universe has no center. Since the Big Bang occurred, the universe has been expanding, but contrary to its name. The Big Bang was not an explosion that radiated outward from a central detonation point. The universe was initially extremely compact and small, but infinite in size, in fact is a matter of scales. All points in the universe expanded uniformly, a process that continues to this day. There was no explosion, or there was an explosion-like process that occurred in all space in the same time, but imagining it as an explosion leads us to believe that it originated from a single point. But this is not the case. The size of the cosmos is indeterminate, and it could potentially be boundless. Certain regions of the cosmos are situated at such vast distances that the light emitted since the occurrence of the Big Bang has not had sufficient time to reach Earth or space-based sensors. Consequently, these regions exist beyond the boundaries of what can be observed in the universe. In the future, as the light from distant galaxies continues to travel, it is reasonable to anticipate that more regions will become visible. Due to Hubble's law, locations that are far enough from Earth are undergoing expansion at a velocity greater than the speed of light. The rate of expansion is increasing due to the presence of dark energy. There is no universe's center because there is no universe's edge. In a finite universe, space is curved such that if you traveled far enough years in a straight line, you would eventually return to your starting point. The possibility exists that our universe is infinite. Over the past few decades, cosmologists have endeavored to quantify the extensive curvature of space. The latest findings, when paired with theoretical reasoning, suggest that we inhabit a geometrically flat universe. Conversely, this convenience arises from the fact that our brains possess limited ability to envision extensive spatial curvature. Even in this context, we have resorted to describing our three-dimensional universe using two-dimensional language. Conversely, this implies that our universe is boundlessly vast and that our observable universe, which exists inside our cosmological horizon, constitutes an exceedingly little portion of an inconceivably immense entirety. If you are curious about the mechanism behind the expansion of our vast and limitless universe, let us revisit our comparison in two dimensions. Theoretical concepts and observations, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang, point to a universe that is remarkably flat. However, cosmologists are still uncertain as to whether the universe is truly flat or if the curvature is so great that the universe only appears flat, similar to how the surface of Earth feels flat. Consistent with the cosmological principle, which states that no location in the universe is unique, the universe lacks a center and, by extension, a boundary. Observations of the distribution of galaxy clusters and the cosmic microwave background reveal a universe that, when viewed from a sufficient distance, appears uniform everywhere. If the grid size on a piece of graph paper appears to be increasing, it would be reasonable to deduce that the paper itself is expanding. Even if the paper were of such immense size that its edges were not visible, the same conclusion would still be drawn, regardless of the possibility that the paper could be infinitely enormous. This also applies to a universe that is without end. Indeed, the product of infinity and another one remains also infinite. This is one of the greatest insight any human ever contemplate.